What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the dive briefing and what should be included during a dive briefing and certain things that you should be on the lookout for anytime that you're on a dive charter and maybe the captain of the boat or the dive master or maybe your instructor is giving a briefing of a dive site. So let's jump right into it. And at the end of this video, I'm actually gonna show you a briefing from this past weekend where a group of our divers went down to Fort Lauderdale to dive with our good friends from Sea Experience. And I'll show you how their briefing went and we'll compare it to what should have been in a briefing. So to start with, first of all, you need an intro to that dive site, such as names, characteristics, uh, description of the site, even personal introduction of the captain or the dive master or whoever's gonna be diving with you. You might want an introduction to the environmental conditions, the dive plan, and even possible sightings and marine life that you may see during that dive. The next thing that you want to listen up for is, of course, dive limitations, such as entry and exits. How are you going to get in the boat or into the water, if you will, and back onto the boat? Also, anchor placement is very key as far as navigational purposes and knowing which boat is yours. A lot of times in the tropics, you may have four or five boats on the same dive site. And with that being said, you need to know exactly where your boat is anchored up so that you can always make a slow, safe ascent and make sure that you get back on the right vessel at the end of the dive. You also need to know max depth and max time. Of course, this is where your buddy's gonna come into play when you're planning that dive based off what his dive profile is or what his experience level is as well. And of course, air management. You need to know what that boat requires you to have to get back on the boat. Most boats will say a 500 PSI limitation, meaning you need to have at least 500 to get back on their boat. A lot of experienced divers, they do the rule of thirds. So if you're diving, say, a 3,000 PSI cylinder, a lot of them will try to surface with around that 1,000 PSI. Next thing is dive top. What type of dive are you doing? Are you doing a deep dive, a wreck dive, maybe a night dive? In any special considerations, all right, such as maybe group control, how are we gonna stay together on this dive? Next, of course, is the buddy system. You know, most of the time on dive boats, they'll have that buddy team system already pre-planned out. If you and your buddy are together, then of course you're gonna be a buddy. If there's a single diver on the boat, a lot of times they will put two single divers together as a buddy team. Such as also lost buddy procedures. What do you do if you and your buddy get lost from each other? You know, in recreational scuba, we train to search for no more than a minute, surface to the top, and of course, wait on your buddy. Signal to the boat to come pick you up. They may have already picked up your buddy at the same time. And of course, buddy team assignments. What are you and your buddy gonna do throughout the dive? Last thing we wanna talk about, of course, is safety management, recall procedures, how to get back on that vessel, or how to know that they're trying to recall you back to the boat for an emergency. Of course, an emergency plan, and of course, first aid, O2, and emergency equipment like that, such as radio, where is all that located? So these are the things that, that should be in a dive briefing and things that you want to listen up and even make, make notes on. If you carry a dive slate with you, write some of this stuff down so that you don't have to memorize it. It's always going to be there on your slate. So let's take a quick look at an actual briefing from this weekend, and then we'll compare it to these points here and see how they held up. Uh, so with that being said, uh, we are U.S. Coast Guard certified vessel, so with that we have to go over all the safety features and amenities with everybody. So one, emergency access, find an open window, don't miss the water. Two, there's no smoking on this boat, we do have three fire extinguishers on here. One underneath the helm where I'm standing, one on the outside of that white box, just past the white box, and the fire corner is our third one. You'll also look around the edge of the boat, you see our plaques for our life jacket storage. We have 13 in the upper left, 13 in the upper right, 13 behind me. 12 right here in this compartment in front of the ladder, and then six Trojan life jackets also in this back compartment here, box. Also with the six Trojan life jackets, we have first aid and oxygen. Now we also have an E-perb on the back corner of the boat, just in case we hit anything, let's go scar know where we're at. The white box, the white box in the far corner there, is the marine head, aka the toilet. Basic rule is if it has not passed through your body, it does not belong. So if you use pear frogs or anything like that, please crumple it up, throw it in the trash can down there that is provided. It's a simple, simple pump handle flush. <clears throat> There's also a recycle bin that says four oceans in the back corner. So anything that can be recycled, please put it back there, all right? Two black buckets on the boat. The one at midship is for cameras. Cameras only, and the front one is for mass, mass only. Now we do have a bottle of default, which you guys can use, which is right here in this gray silver bottle. We have a freshwater shower here on this back ladder. When using it, please spray out towards the ocean, not in towards your fellow divers. Dry storage is in this white box right here. Please limit it to backpacks, cell phones, t-shirts, shoes, and stuff like that. And then as you're gear anything like that, please slide it underneath your seat. Or if you don't have room there, throw it right here on top of the lid. <clears throat> Waste are gonna be located right here underneath the lid. Two start in the front, five going towards the back. 
Now, we are scheduled for a mid-level rec today. We are going to the Mercy Jesus. The Mercy Jesus is a small uh, cargo container ship. It has two small cargo holds up at the bow. The orientation is bow to the southeast and stern to the northwest. Maximum depth here is 70 feet. Uh, we got about a 20 minute ride to the port, then probably about another 20 minute ride out in the ocean. Once we get close, we'll give you guys the 10 minute warning. That way you guys can get geared up. Once we get out to the site, we'll swim the line down to the rack, attach it, and then bring it up here and we'll give you guys the weather report. We'll be doing a giant stride entry right out the front here. Once you guys do your giant stride entry, please stay on the line. You'll find the two things you're looking for, the rack and us. All right? Now, I'm assuming everybody here is down with the computer today, correct? Good talk. See All right. You. Now, rules for the first dive. Back on the boat, no less than 500 PSI, no breaking deco. Either one of these rules broke for the first dive, your bench for the second dive, no questions asked. We're all about safety on this boat. Does everybody understand that? Yes. Yes. All right, good. Once we get done with the first dive, we'll come in and do a drift dive on a shallow reef. It'll be about 30 feet. We'll give you guys an hour and change on that. Now, last chance. Does everybody have everything they need? Everybody's checked their secondary tank. Everybody has dive gear, dive buddy, all that wonderful stuff. I do. You got stuff for her. Don't worry about it. So, with that being said, let's get out of here and let's go have a good time, all right? You ready? Right. Let's go do this. Yeah. Hop on, son. You need some practice. <laughs> All right, guys, so there you go. That was an actual briefing from our recent dive of this past weekend down with Sea Experience out of Fort Lauderdale. If you're ever in the area, definitely check them out. We've been using these guys for many, many years. They're really good friends of ours, and we enjoy going out and diving with them. So let's take the captain's briefing there, and let's compare it to what should have been in a briefing, and we'll see how he scored up. So the first thing, of course, is intro to the dive site. And I think he hit the nail right on the head. He talked about the wreck dive being the Mercy Jesus. He talked about the type of wreck that it was. He even went into a little bit detail on the reef system that we'd be making for the second dive. So I think he hit that you know, the, hit that nail on the head. As far as environmental conditions, he said after they went down and hooked up the anchor to it that the dive master would come back up and talk about the environmental conditions. So that was kind of there too. As far as dive plan, I didn't really hear a dive plan from him, but we're going to come back to that point because I think he covered it later on throughout the briefing. As far as possible sightings in marine life, I never really hear, heard him say anything about maybe predators in the water or what type of marine life, so I'm going to take a point away for that. As far as personal introduction, I've actually got to give him credit here. We made a mistake of not hitting the record button soon enough, but he talked about who he was, what boat we were on, who the dive charter was through. So all that was there. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see it in the video, but I promise you guys, he did say it. That was our mess up. We just simply didn't hit the record button soon enough. As far as dive limitations, he talked about entry methods. He said that we'd be doing a giant stride from the front of the boat, and that would also be where we got out of the water as well. Anchor placement, he talked about exactly where on the shipwreck the anchor would be placed so that we could navigate while underwater. Speaking of navigation, he also talked about the uh, area or the navigational heading of where the stern and the bow of the shipwreck was. As far as max depth and time, he talked about the 70 foot depth. He said this shipwrecks at 70 feet. Now he didn't give us a max time, but what he did say was, is everybody diving with computer. And that simply means we should be following our computer and not going beyond our no decompression limit. And of course, air management, he gave us that 500 PSI rating. This is very typical for a lot of charter services. They'll say, be back on the boat with 500 PSI, no less, and it's for safety. Now, once again, a lot of us dive the rule of thirds. So if you're diving with a 3000 PSI, 80 cubic foot aluminum, that simply means you start with three, you turn it two, and you end with 1000 PSI. But on this charter, they allow us to come up with 500 PSI as well. Now, as far as dive type, we had two different dives. We had a wreck dive and a reef dive. That's pretty much all that needs to be said about it. Any special considerations? He talked about things on the boat that were special considerations as far as where to store stuff. As far as the dive itself, there wasn't much. He did talk about portholes being in the boat, uh, what could have been penetrated, stuff like that. Uh, group control, he pretty much said, hey, stay with your buddy. If you come up, we'll come over to get you or whatnot. If you come up the line, we'll assist you getting back on the boat. Buddy system, buddy teams, he talked about doing that pre-dive safety check. He asked, did everybody check their gear? Does you and your buddy have everything that you need? As far as lost buddy procedures, he didn't really talk about that. So I got to take major points away from there. And of course, the buddy team assignments, you know, I'm going to take one point away from there too, as well, simply because he didn't really tell us. Now, I will state this. I'll probably give him a point back for it, simply because as divers, we need to be responsible for our own selves. We should be able to plan our dives either with 
a computer or with a set of dive tables and our buddy and not have to rely on the dive master or the boat captain or even your instructor to plan it that should be on you as the diver so i will give him a point back there as far as safety management the emergency plan the first aid in o2 locations the lot the life jacket locations even in emergency communications for the uh coast guard he talked all about that one thing that i will take points off for here is of course the diver recall i never heard him say anything about uh how they would notify us underwater maybe tapping on the boat or send a diver after us to get us back on the boat during an emergency so i've got to take points off there as well so out of everything here the possible sightings the marine life uh, the lost buddy procedures and the recall those were three things that I didn't really hear him say and one thing that you got to remember is these guys in the tropics they are doing these briefings non-stop day in day out usually two three times a day and so sometimes they may slip up and leave something out but all in all other than those three points I think he hit the nail right on the head he scored pretty decent for his dive briefing. Uh, once again, I want to give props out to Sea Experience. It's a group of guys that we use all the time. If you're in the Fort Lauderdale area, definitely check them out. We'll put all their information in the description below. But guys, if you like this video, or if you want to put some pointers or tips for them, put it down in the description below. They will definitely be watching this video as well. We're going to share it with them. But guys, if you like the video, simply smash the like button and share it for me. As always, guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.